Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today we're going to take a look at the comparison between the one-handed backhand drive or topspin and the one-handed backhand slice. I've done another comparison not long ago between the forehand and one-handed backhand. So if you haven't seen that one, uh, just click the card above and it will take you to that video. But today we're taking a look at mostly differences and a little a few commonalities between the backhand drive and the backhand slice. So let's get started. The first difference between the backhand topspin and the backhand slice is the grip. So ideally we want to hold an eastern backhand grip for the one-handed backhand drive or topspin. So that will look like this at contact which means that my wrist is stable, so it's, because it's bent like this, so it's stable. If the wrist is like this, somewhere in between, it's not very stable. So when it's like this, it's stable. So when I'm hitting the ball, I want to be in this position with the wrist. For backhand slice, I want to have a continental grip so that I'm stable at contact like this with an open racket face. So those are the two differences in ideal situation. Now there are some combinations possible. You can play a backhand drive, can't hit much topspin, but you can play backhand drive with a continental grip. So let me try one. So I'm going to hit the backhand. So this one went in okay, and I will not change the grip, and I'll, change, I'll hit a, a backhand slice. So this was a very good backhand slice. So it's possible to play drive and slice with the continental grip. The grip is not optimal for backhand spin, but you can get away with it. You'll, you will hit flatter backhands. But you cannot really play backhand slice with an eastern backhand grip. So for hitting a drive backhand, top spin backhand, this grip is optimal. Now if I try to hit a backhand slice with this grip, let me try, it'll probably be a mess. So yeah, I, I did, I did hit an okay slice, but it's very awkward. So it's very, it's a, this one flying off. So very strange feeling, very awkward feeling. So you cannot really play a good backhand slice with an Eastern backhand grip. So important to be aware of these differences if you're not yet aware. Again, it's possible. And especially if you're playing for many years with the continental grip backhands, like 10 years or more, don't even think about changing because it's going to take you a long time and you're going to go through a lot of suffering and frustration to change the grip. So likely it's not worth uh, a try. If you're not playing that many years, maybe months to two years or three years then, and you're playing right now with the continental grip, drive top spin back and then I recommend you try and change. You will go through some period of frustration, but then it's going to be much better. So the second main difference between the one-handed back and drive and the slice is obviously the swing path. So when we're hitting a top spin or, or a drive, we're swinging upwards. So let me hit one back end. So I'm hitting a back end. So obviously I'm swinging upwards. If I'm hitting a slice, then and swinging more downwards. So what I would like to add here that many times troubles players is that they don't transfer weight correctly, usually for back and slice. So what we must try to do to help our stroke to stabilize the stroke to make it more consistent is that if I am swinging upwards on the back end then I also want to rise at the same time so I want to especially here from the pelvis region I want to move my pelvis in the shape of the swing I've made one video in the past about that I will give you a, a card you can click on it and it'll take you to the video so again, if I demonstrate, if you pay attention to my legs and my, my pelvis, so when I'm hitting a top spin, I'm rising. So now when I'm hitting a back and slice, 
I am lowering myself a little bit on a typical slice. If the ball is at a normal height, because my swing path is downwards, I am also in a very stable way going downwards. If the ball is very high, so if I get, yeah, if I get a high ball, I can stand on a straight leg, very stable, stabilize myself and swing downwards very sharp. So, yeah, one more. So if it's a very high ball, I can hit like this, stabilize, and I don't have to go from here down. If the ball's a bit lower, the most natural way to move is to move like this. So I'm moving always with my body weight in the same shape as the swing. So when the swing comes to here, I'm still going down. If my follow through does a little upswing, that's when I also rise. So I also always want to synchronize with the shape of my swing path. Uh, the next difference between the one-handed topspin backhand and the slice backhand is very important because most players are not aware of it and they keep getting in trouble usually on the backhand slice. And the difference is in the distance to the contact point. So when I'm hitting a one-handed backhand, the contact point is a little bit closer to me than when hitting a backhand slice. So I'm talking right now uh, sideways distance, so not time related, so how much in front or behind, but just to the side. So let's compare now the top spin backhand and the slice backhand contact point difference. So I'm going to freeze here at contact and you see that I made two lines, so from the ball to the center of my body on both sides. And so to help you better see the difference in the distance between those two lines I've copy pasted these two lines you can see so the top line is from the top spin backhand distance from the ball to my body and the bottom line is from slice backhand so obviously the distance is not half a meter or something it's maybe 10 centimeters maybe a bit more so that's my four inches five inches and it's important to be aware of this difference because if you're not hitting the back and slice at correct distance, if you keep coming 4 inches or about 10 centimeters too close, then you will be forced to rotate your body in order to accommodate for that incorrect distance to the ball and your technique will be incorrect and you will not hit a good clean controlled back and slice. Why is that important to know? It's important to know because players who play mostly drive backhands or who started first with a backhand, their mind, their brain is going to automatically, as they're moving towards the ball, and even if they've decided to play a backhand slice, their mind is going to tell them, come close to the ball because this is the right distance to the ball. Now, when we get the slice too close to the body, we are forced to rotate. So that's why players so many times are unable to stay sideways on the slice, but they rotate like this. And it's not basically just a technical mistake. It's not just something mechanically wrong. Players have to rotate because they've set up the racket like this, and now they cannot really swing where the arm likes to go, but they have to swing here. So if I show one, so if I get the ball too close, I have to swing here to get to the ball, so my shoulder has to go this way. So that's why players keep swinging like this. So we cannot correct the player only mechanically and tell them, don't rotate, we like stay sideways, but we have to check if their contact point is a bit too close, because if it is, they have no choice but to rotate to get the racket on the ball. If they didn't rotate, they would hit the ball with their hand. And so it's very important to realize that the backhand slice contact point is further away to the side. And once you're aware of that, you'll have to keep overwriting your instinct, which is going to keep telling you, come close to the ball, and you're going to have to keep telling yourself, no, no, stay away, stay away, keep the distance to the ball so that the slice is going to go nicely. So if I show one, then the slice will, is going to go nicely. If I have more space to the ball and I can stay sideways. I have room to stay sideways 
and then the backhand slice is a very clean shot. One commonality between the one-handed backhand drive and backhand slice is that we need to stay sideways for a short period while we're hitting the stroke. So when players don't do the stroke right, they over-rotate. So I'll show one one-handed backhand and one slice when players over-rotate. So when they hit the ball, they rotate like this on the drive or they rotate like this on the slice. So there are various reasons for that. We mentioned one on the slice, you might get the ball too close. Players feel good power and so on, but they don't realize they're losing precision. So in both cases, we have to stay sideways for the duration of hitting. So if I hit one backhand, then here I have to hold for a while this position. So I have rotation, then I hold so that I can aim so that my racket can go straighter towards the target. I slow down, I hold the position and then I can continue rotation. So when I hit at full speed, that's harder to see. So now I rotate, so it's a bit harder to see. And that's what usually deceives the eye of the player. They're thinking there's continuous rotation, but there isn't. So the same goes for back and slice. When I'm slicing the ball, I have to hold position of my body so that the racket can hit the ball straight and give the ball direction. So I'm, even if I'm hitting cross court, I have to hold with my chest this line. But what skilled players do is they usually open up very quickly after they felt that they held the line. And that can deceive your eye because in, to your eye it seems like there's a continuous rotation of the body during the slice. But there isn't. We have to hold the line, the way we call it. You have to hold the line for a split second and then you can open up. So this applies to both backhands. Another difference between the one-handed backhand and the backhand slice is the angle of the racket at contact. So this might seem like an obvious uh, difference, but I want to show you that the difference is not as big as you might think. So players usually think that on the top spin backhand, the backhand is very closed. It's very closed by a lot of degrees. And they might visualize that when hitting a backhand slice, the racket is very open. So in most cases, it's not very open. On the backhand slice, it would only be very open on a very low ball. That's when the racket is relatively open, like by a lot of degrees compared to the vertical position. But when we're hitting at these heights or higher, the angle of the racket is not open much at all. So I've recorded in super slow motion both shots from the side and I will show you side by side so that you can see that yes, there is a difference in the angle. So this one is maybe close, maybe more perpendicular. This one is a little bit open, but you will see that the difference is quite small. So in conclusion, I hope that this comparison between the one-handed back and drive and the one-handed back and slice helped you clear up a bit your mental image that it's going to put you on a better track, help you improve your backhands. So if you like this video, please like it and subscribe and I will see you next time.